Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to Sended Moments channel. I'm Jean Lima and this video is my part two of my Holy Grail fragrances. So I uploaded uh, the first video about Holy, my Holy Grail, my 15 Holy Grail fragrances like a few weeks ago. I asked you guys if you would be interested to see a part two because I mean, I have a large collection so I could easily mention 30 or I can mention maybe even more, maybe even a part three. Uh, and that one would definitely be the last because I, if not, I mean, the Holy Grail fragrance concept, I mean, loses interest. Um, maybe I can record uh, part three, maybe. Um, but a lot of you were very interested and they, all of you were very supporting in uh, showing interest to see a part two. So here we are. I will talk about 15 other fragrances that I consider to be holy grail fragrances. And why? Because some of these are discontinued, some of these are hard to find. And if they are available out there, it's just they are that good that I think that everyone should have. I'm very proud in owning these fragrances. So that's why I consider these holy grail because, and also because some of these are a reference in their category. So that being said, uh, the only thing, the only last thing that I want to mention is that this will not be a ranked video. So all of these fragrances are worth trying and all of them are masterpiece material. So with that being said, the first fragrance uh, in this video, in this part two Holy Grail fragrances is from the house of Rocha and it is Rocha Femme. This one right here, Rocha Femme. Now this is not discontinued. Uh, this is available in the online discounters. This is a 100 ml uh, bottle size. I purchased this one for 25 euros for a 100 ml bottle size like this. Uh, I think this is the more recent formulation. This is not vintage, I guess, uh, but this scent is amazing. Now forget the Femme. Uh, because th this for me is strictly unisex. This is a slightly animalic Chypre fragrance. Absolutely glorious. Uh, you have the plum. You have, for me, it's like cumin that gives this sweaty animalic feel with moss, light citruses, and this slightly ambery touch in the base. This fragrance is to die for. I absolutely love this scent. Um, this for me even leans more masculine than feminine in my opinion. And I absolutely love the color of the liquid, this dark amber color. I mean, it's amazing. I can't wait to wear this when it gets colder outside because I think this is perfect for the colder weather. I mean, this lasts, this has a lasting power, at least on my skin. Uh, and, and overall, I mean, the animalic nuances in here, that sweatiness, I think it just works better on my skin during the colder weather rather than it's hot uh, because this can be a bit overwhelming. Um, but I absolutely love this. This was a blind buy thanks to Eugene. Um, and I, I'm a proud, very proud owner of Femme de Rocha. Uh, this is Holy Grail, one of the best Chypres in the game. Um, and I highly advise you to check this one out. It's a masterpiece. It's Femme de Rocha as my number one, uh, as the first fragrance that I'm mentioning. Again, this is not a ranked video. The other fragrance that I have here is from the house of Aramis and it is Tobacco Reserve. I am so proud to have this fragrance. Uh, I think this is now discontinued, unfortunately, because this is the best mainstream designer tobacco scent. Uh, and it's so sad that they discontinued this fragrance. This, oh, wow. This for me leans a bit more masculine, but again, if you are a woman and if you love tobacco fragrances, you should definitely check this one out. This is, it has that barbershop-ish, old-school, masculine 
feel but with this amazing tobacco leaf very thick tobacco leaf with cinnamon and a hint of leather it has leathery touches in here also i mean th this fragrance is to die for it's so gentlemanly so elegant um i i absolutely love this this, this is really the best tobacco scent in the mainstream designer fragrance i'm not counting with the exclusive designer range i mean i'm not talking about tobacco wood nor tobacco vini nor any other tobacco fragrances that might be in the more exclusive range of the designer brands now i'm just talking about mainstream designers this is the best really um tobacco leaves done very well um, and again, it's so sad that this was discontinued, um, or at least I, I heard that this was discontinued. If it's not, then I guess that this is very hard to find because I, I never saw this in my uh, in my local department stores. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know if this is officially discontinued or not, but this is definitely very hard to find. I purchased it. I blind bought this one, and I'm so happy that I did. I mean, this one received. A big amount of hype when this was first released like a, some years ago um and yeah for a reason i i absolutely understand the hype of this front of this fragrance an amazing tobacco leaf scent it's wonderful and it's a holy grail yeah this is definitely a holy grail it's again tobacco reserve by anamis now the next fragrance here it's from an indie brand um and this is a staple Th this fragrance this is the type of scent uh that everyone should try and i will go even far to say that it's a fragrance that everyone should have um it's a reference in its category it's from the house of andy tower it's l'air du désert marocca this one right here uh I have this since 2017. This was, I think this was my first, no, it wasn't, it wasn't my first niche, but it was my third or fourth. I mean, it's in the top five first niche fragrances when I started to delve into niche uh, perfumery. Um, th this was definitely my first indie fragrance. Um, and this was definitely my first amber scent. So of course this is amber but it's more than that this is very spicy dry uh scent of course a lot of people say oh i can feel the the air of the moroccan desert i mean of course because this is l'air du désert marocain but actually um in this case i oh, th th this smells so special i've already been in morocco actually so I can say that this felt this smells like you are in the markets with all the spices the spicy smells in the air the dry dusty air it's amazing and it really captivated that image for me more than in being in the desert it's more for me being in the middle of the market it's amazing uh, and this fragrance smells Fantastic. It's really one of the best embers ever created. It's so good. It's breathtakingly amazing. And of course, this is a holy grail. Um, I mean, the bottle itself, the bottle itself for me, it's already an iconic bottle from any tower. And uh, L'Air de Zemorquin is probably his best creation. Arguably. <laughs> but this is L'Air de Zemorquin. Guys, if you love embers, this is the one that you should definitely have. It's Annie Towers, again, L'Air du Désert Marocco. Now the next fragrance here, it's from the house of Rania J and it is Oud Assam. This is my second favorite Oud fragrance. So my first and my absolute favorite um, Oud fragrance was featured on my first uh, Holy Grail fragrances, the part one, let's say. I needed to mention this one in my part two. This is fantastic. And actually, in terms of quality and price, I mean, price, quality, this is better because the 
I will say the Hamon Montreal Soul of Oud, which was the one that was featured on my uh, first 15 Holy Grail fragrances. That fragrance is a 50 ml like this, but I mean, the price range is 330 euros uh, for 50 ml. So it's a bit more steep. Uh, it's 330 or 20, it's, but it's in the 300 euro range. Uh, so it's quite a lot. And this one is, well, 125. If I'm not missing so a huge difference huge difference and in terms of quality I mean they are not that different now they are very different oud scents whilst the soul of oud from Ramon Regal it's more sweet resinous chocolatey here is spicy and funky very funky and animalic and I this one and soul of oud both have uh, a natural smelling wood uh, impression, at least for me. So, um, well, I can say because I already had a, a I don't, I'll not say like conference, like a, a training, uh, and Ramon um, Montreal was there actually. It was a small event at Embassy Niche Perfumery Store here in Lisbon. Shout outs to my favorite niche perfume store uh, in Portugal. I'll leave the link in of the website in the description box down below. Uh, and so that happened like a couple of years ago where Ramon Morigal came to the embassy and then he was just um, teaching us the different smells. The He then showed us the all natural ingredients. I mean, it was a fantastic experience. And then he showed us the oud and the um, oud that he had, I mean, it's literally uh, the one that it was in Soul of Wood. I mean, the, the scent, it was the same. So for me, to my nose, that is natural oud. Soul of Wood has natural oud. Um, and, but I would say that this one also has natural oud, uh, even if it's just a drop, but definitely smells like real Indian oud. Because Indian oud is more spicy and more animalic, more funky. And it's exactly how this smells like. It's amazing. It's to die for. It has also a lead retouch in the base. It's wonderful. Uh, it, it's really one of the best wood fragrances in the market and for a very affordable price when you will compare other wood fragrances um, in the niche realm of things, of course. With the Sam from Kanye J, it's really a masterpiece. Now next is this fragrance and this brand. I, I, I don't mention this brand in this channel, uh, maybe because I'm very skeptical and I have yet to experience their new fragrances in the new bottle presentation to see how much they were reformulated. I'm talking about Serge Le Ton. Uh, Rich Mitch, love you buddy. I know Rich Mitch, uh, he has an amazing channel. Uh, and he he loves his vintages and he also loves his Serge Le Ton fragrances but he loves the old Serge Le Ton bottles and I, 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 I can see that because I also do prefer the previous bottle presentation of Serge Le Ton than the new ones but I have yet to I will not say waste some time but I need to spend some time uh, with their new um, fragrances with their new bottle presentation to see if they really reformulated the their fragrances and if they really reformulated how badly that was but well that aside um i really love serge Luton. serge Luton was one of my also um first niche fragrances that i uh discovered i mean years ago i have five six fragrances from Serge Luton and but this one is the holy grail in my opinion Fianangi now just look at this color absolutely stunning and this is the older bottle presentation that I'm talking about I mean so chic so thin and I mean really it really captivates the eye no at least in my opinion it's amazing and you can see how much I already wore this. I, I love this during the winter time. This for me is one of those fragrances that it's always in my uh, winter rotation. 
this smells like you are under a Christmas tree with some incense around you. <laughs> Literally how this smells like for me. Yeah, it's very resinous, very piney, incensey. I love this. Absolutely love this. This is one of the most unique fragrances that I tried. One of the best fragrances that I have. It's a masterpiece. Very happy to have this. Fionongi, again, smells like you are under Christmas tree with a lot of incense around you. It's, it's to die for. Next fragrance here is from the house of Tom Ford from the Private Blank Collection. Tobacco Wood. I love this fragrance and I just don't talk about this fragrance more often just because this is discontinued. Um, but th this is one of the best fragrances from the private blend, hands down. I don't know why they discontinued this one. It's literally one of the best, top five best Tom Ford fragrances. Um, this is, of course, tobacco wood, also whiskey. You have whiskey and an animalic ambery touch this is basically amber absolute uh with tobacco and whiskey and a hint of wood it's amazing Th this smells amazing definitely the most daring of the wood line which is i think all of that wood line is discontinued with the exception of wood wood which i have um but this one is definitely the most daring and it's also one of the most daring fragrances from Tom Ford in this private blend because it's more animalic, boozy, heavy. It's, it's to die for. I absolutely love this. Um, but again, sadly discontinued, but I'm very proud to have this in my collection. Tobacco Wood by Tom Ford. Now the next fragrance is from the house of Ramon Morial from the Oud collection, uh, which is called Don't Touch My Oud, and it is Alhambra Oud. This Alhambra Oud is, for me, the best rose oud scent. Hands down, hands down. The rose here is so intense and carnal. Um, this. The rose that it's using here, also sweet, like a slightly jammy rose, carnal, uh, velvety red rose. It's, it's fantastic. Quit wood. With this chocolatey wood, with the same type of wood that it's used in Soul of Wood, it's in here, with the type of rose that it's used in Flamengo, and it's here. Also by Ramon Monegal, of course. This is breathtakingly amazing. This, this is intense. Uh, this is intoxicating. And it's a type of scent that I can't stop smelling. It's that good. It has a natural feel overall. This fragrance has a natural feel in it. And uh, for me, it's the best. Uh, of course, it again, expensive. This is... 320 or 30 euros so i mean it's expensive but it's worth it it's worth it uh for me this is better than uh, i would say hombre nomad from louis vito um and better than the others although i have quite a few rose wood fragrances that i really love like diptyque wood palau i think diptyque wood palau might be the best in terms of price quality but this is for me the best and this is my favorite in the end it's Alhambra Oud by Ramon Morial. it's amazing I will definitely wear this during the winter time it's so sensual so sensual the next fragrance here is from the house of Profumo Broma of course you all know how much I love this uh, house and it is Aqua di Sale now uh i'm not mentioning amber audia you all know that that's my favorite amber fragrance um in my previous video my previous holy grail fragrances i featured patchouli um then i was thinking about maybe olibanum maybe santalum and so uh, and many others that i have but i ended up with this one 
Aqua di Sale. Aqua di Sale, I mean, it, it, this is the best aquatic scent. If you just want one aquatic scent, this is it. It's the best. It's the most natural smelling, most realistic uh, ocean water smelling scent that you will, will smell. So this is definitely the best aquatic in the game, Aqua di Sale. And that's why I'm featuring this, uh, this fragrance here, because it's the one that I wore the most. Uh, it's the one that, this is my signature scent during the summertime. Um, and it has a performance, it has a natural feel, it has everything. Uh, this is a summer staple. It's wonderful. Let me just, so many memories. <laughs> it's so good. Really, it, it, this really captures the that ocean breeze to perfection. It's amazing. It's it's really amazing. I absolutely love this. It has also a touch of cedar wood. Uh, it's wonderful. Again, Aqua di Sale. And I think it's the best seller of Profumo Broma in Italy, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so again, I could mention, I could have mentioned a lot of fragrances uh, from their range, but but this one, this one also deserves. Uh, to be here. This is a holy grail. This is the best aquatic again. Um, one of the best summer fragrances ever created. So it's Aqua di Sale again by Profumo Broma. Now the next fragrance is from the house of Amouage and actually on my first, uh, my initial video on holy grail fragrances, I talked about a fragrance also from the house of Amouage and it was Lyric Man which is one of my favorite rose fragrances. Uh, but this time I want to feature Interlude Man. Interlude Man, I mean, doesn't need any introduction if you are in the fragrance game for a while. I mean, Interlude Man is one of the best uh, fragrances from Amouage. I mean, one of the most well-known and one of the most popular fragrances from Amouage, definitely. I mean, this has already two flankers, um, Interlude Black Iris and Interlude 53, which is an extrait version of the Eau de Parfum, the original Eau de Parfum uh, Interlude. Um, I tried the Black Iris and it's... Pff, nah, that's not Interlude for me. Um, but I have yet to try the extrait, which I'm quite curious to try, but I think it's a bit redundant because this is very intense in itself. So, I mean, I think the extrait will be even more intense, more powerful, which I think it's, it's not necessary because this is already powerful, intense enough. Um, so this is basically oregano, very unique, spicy accord in here very smoky like campfire smoke and resinous and woodsy so of course you have frankincense you have wood you have benzoin or poponax so you have all the resins and the balsams and the smoke fields it's amazing it's very dark and it... actually funny enough i when i was working in, in a law firm um uh, from time to time during the winter time, I would do a couple of sprays of interlude and actually I always receive good attention. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, but this one is amazing. I absolutely love this. This is my second favorite from Amouage. My first, my absolute favorite from Amouage is Jubilation 25, which I'm not featuring here just because I'm always mentioning Jubilation. So I wanted to give some highlight to the black be uh, the black beast the blue beast <laughs> uh, of it, that that is interlude I absolutely love this um, and Amouage you all know it's one of my favorite niche brands and uh, can't wait to include to add to my collection some uh, fragrances that are targeted to women but for me they are strictly unisex um, because they also need some attention. Uh, and they are also amazing, great quality scents, very unique creations um, that deserve, again, a lot of attention. But this is a holy grail in my opinion, and it's one of the best um, Middle Eastern style fragrances. This created a trend and it's also 
uh, a reference in its category of this dark resinous balsamic uh, category i think this is definitely a staple it's interlude from amouage next fragrance here it's from the house of gucci gucci guilty absolute this is a holy grail i mean i can't believe that gucci created a fragrance like this i mean amazing but of course it's now discontinued <laughs> um because i mean nowadays unfortunately people just want to smell fresh and musky and boring in the end uh, these type of fragrances unfortunately for us fragrance lovers fragrance freaks it's it's not a type of scent that will be popular and um, it will get the acts if the sales don't go well this is wow an amazing leather scent this smells like an industrial leather dark leather with vetiver amazing Th this is really industrial leather and develops into a rudy vetiver amazing scent this is a revenge of the 80s uh i would call and unfortunately didn't go well in sales and that's why it's discontinued but uh still i am fortunate and proud to have this one in my collection this is a 90 ml you have also the 150 ml if you can find it uh, but 100 ml for me it's it's good to go i already wore this quite a few times and it's magic it's amazing it's an amazing scent here it's one of the best leathers and again sadly discontinued from the house of gucci gucci guilty absolute next variant series from the house of mask milano and it is la tessa la tessa is one of my favorite iris this is one of the best iris fragrances in the game in my opinion created by luca maffei uh this is a oh, a natural smelling rudy butchery iris but this is more of a fresh sparkly iris but it's it's so intense the iris here it's so predominant and so intense iris for me it's one of the best categories one of the best notes i love iris um it's one of my favorite notes it's because it's very elegant and it's very sophisticated for me and it's very sensual at the same time and this is this is definitely more elegant more sophisticated it's more sparkly mm. i absolutely love this fragrance this is really one of the best out there and if you love iris this is a must try at least i mean i, I really do like the bottle presentation of mask milano fragrances but the, the the bottle size it's interesting at 35 ml so it's quite interesting but um the the scent this fragrance is really a masterpiece in my opinion so this is la tessa from mask milano but i also want to include an uh, another iris scent that i absolutely love and these two are my favorite irises or my favorite iris fragrances uh, so this one is from the house of Baruti, and it is Dama Kupa. Wow. Now, the difference between Dama Kupa and La Tessa here is that La Tessa is fresher, it's more sparkly. This one, it's more intense and it's more heavy, it has heavier notes. Gourmand notes, I would say, even because it has a lot of cacao, chocolate. But it's so good. <laughs> now th this feels more complex, and it feels more full-bodied. This goes more in a Dior Homme territory, but with much better ingredients um, and more complex. But if you love Dior Homme, I think you will love this. Now the iris here smells natural. It it really has that, just like in Latessa, this heavy butchery but this one is also a bit makeup -y, but again very butchery uh and but then you have the cacao 
you have like a roasted chestnut feel and you it's a bit balsamic a bit resinous i mean this is amazing and every time i wear this also i always receive good feedback it's an amazing scent imagine like the iris being the center this very heavy buttery iris with cacao some balsam some resins some roasted chest chestnut it's amazing it's really fantastic I, I, th this damacupa and latessa these two are my favorite iris to this moment these two are the best uh, in the iris category it's latessa in one way and damacupa in the other now i also tried just talking about iris i also tried recently very recently la pausa by chanel from the Liz exclusive and what a disappointment it was while i loved the opening that opening is amazing i mean it's really a natural smelling iris right into your face but that only lasts for 15 minutes then the iris kind of fades uh and then i just have this musky aldehydic scent that i'm like where's the iris i was expecting something more so it was a bit disappointing but talking about chanel <laughs> actually and talking about liz, Ex liz exclusive this is a fragrance that i absolutely love uh, so it's in the opposite side of things uh, i absolutely love this this is holy grail this is a fragrance that again everyone should try it's one of the best patchoulis so i think you already figured out what fragrance is it's coho mondel coho mondel is a holy grail for me this wow such a unique patchouli scent and so so edible so sensual it has this white chocolate feel with this very creamy patchouli or some a slightly earthy patchouli it's it's not your full-on earthy cakey chocolatey patchouli but it's done right it's that earthy patchouli with the elegance of chanel if that makes sense oh, man, this is fantastic i absolutely love this this is perfect for date nights close encounter situations this is and at the same time very elegant and this is for special occasions but i like sometimes i like to bathe in this sense especially when it's cooler outside i love this it's Mondel from chanel i mean masterpiece right here the next fragrance is from the house of guerlain and it is derby of course <laughs> i've been talking about this one over and over because i mean again it was a huge deal <laughs> the best deal of the year um, but also because this the scent inside is absolutely fantastic a beautiful Chypre scent and actually I plan to make like a, a top 10 list of Chypres <sighs> this is fantastic and, and I think that this is discontinued also that's why I'm featuring here I'm very proud to have this one I, I have this fragrance on my wish lists forever so I'm very happy to have this one in my collection absolutely love this again green mossy um, citrusy elegant Chypre it's, it's wonderful Chypre all have this pyramid you have the citruses you have the woods the moss uh usually you have these uh, notes and these notes combined create this chipre style scent um it's amazing i absolutely love derby from garland and last but definitely not least now this is a recent acquisition and it's already here <laughs> on the holy world uh because it's one of the best fragrances that I smelled 
in recent times. It's from Thomas de Monico, Raw Gold. Now, this fragrance is something special. But I think this was released like a couple of years ago. So this is not a recent release. This was not released this year nor last year. I think this was released in 2020. Um, quite exclusive. I mean, there's a very few limited bottle uh, bottles out there. I have the 179, as you can see. Um, so yeah, this is a very exclusive uh, limited edition type of release. I don't know how, if it will be like that or not. Uh, I don't know if they will create more fragrances or will create more bottles. Um, I don't know, but I, I can tell this one is fantastic. Wow, wow, this was, I immediately, the first time I, I tried this, it was like, okay. Now, the first time, the very first time I tried this, it was on paper and I wasn't very impressed. But when I tried on my skin, everything changed. This fragrance has everything in here. But in the end, this has like a boozy coffee, balsamic, resinous, woodsy scent with a slightly animalic undertone. Amazing. This is Eau de Parfum concentration, yes. Um, and this is quite dark, very opulent, very intense, and the lasting power is fantastic also. I mean, this is a pure winter gem, in my opinion. And uh, that's why it's already in here, in the Holy Grail. <laughs> wow, that doesn't happen this easily. But, but it's just to show how good this fragrance is, how unique and the quality of the ingredients in here, the blend itself, it's amazing. Now, again, on paper, I mean, it was nice. I'm not saying it wasn't nice. It was nice. It was a nice scent, a very good scent. But, I mean, yeah, it was a dark, resinous, balsamic scent. I mean, you have a lot. I mean, I just mentioned interlude. Fionongi also, so I mean you have quite a few fragrances in that category, which I was like, okay, I mean it while it's nice, but I have fragrances that goes in this category. Now when I tried on my skin, everything changed. I mean this is it has that booziness, the roasted coffee, the animalic nuances, I mean everything amped up. Wow. Intoxicating in it and amazing. I mean it has this wow factor it really has the wow factor it's fantastic again i highly advise you to try I mean, yes this is expensive it's this is only 50 ml and it's the price is 260 euros if i'm not mistaken so i mean yeah it's expensive but just try i mean try to sample this one and because it's really worth it so again thomas de monaco raw gold finishing this video guys i hope you enjoyed the part two of my 15 holy grail fragrances Tell me in the comments down below what other Holy Grail fragrances that you have in your collection. And see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Ciao.